Amen. We still are missing quite a few people today. I hate to say it. Uh, I'm going to say it anyway. But this is one of the things that's been a frustration for me over the years. Without fail. Folks, any church, any church you go to, you let them have an anniversary and the building's packed. Uh -huh. You let Easter come, the building's packed. For some reason, it has not worked that way in all the years I've been in affirming ministry. I have never seen it work that way in our church. And that is a frustration. That hurts. It really deeply hurts. And uh, some people who may not understand, they say, well, I go to an affirming church. We get a church full of folks. Well, let me tell you a little secret about this ministry. We're a one God, Jesus name, apostolic, uh -huh. tongue talking, Holy Ghost baptized, Acts 238 preaching uh -huh. church. Amen. There is no movement on this planet amongst Christian folk that is more conservative and anti-LGBT than this movement. Mm -hmm. What we're doing irritates and aggravates more people than you could ever dream of. Amen. In the 23 years I've been in affirming ministry, I've received death threats, I've received all kinds of stuff from people because we are part of one of the most negative anti-LGBT Christian movements on the planet. So the dynamic involved in doing the work that we are doing is not the same as the dynamic that MCC experiences. It's not the same dynamic that UCC experiences. It is not the same dynamic that even a uh, a Baptist affirming or, or, you know, a mainstream affirming church might experience. No, we are on a razor's edge. I've explained this to people over the years. We are on a razor's edge. We appeal to a very, very, very specific demographic. Yep. And that demographic is so small you can't even imagine. We appeal to LGBT people that want to live for God, that want to live right, want to do right, want to act right. We appeal to LGBT people that don't just want to come to church and play church. We appeal to people who want to come to church and have church and then leave the church and live church. Uh huh. We're not one of those groups that you come to church and you do your little shout and dance and then go out and sleep with everybody that walks down the street. Uh-oh, he said. Uh-huh. That's right. Listen, I've been to conferences. I've been to meetings. I've seen this kind of garbage going on, people. A lot of the churches in our movement, that's what they're all about. It's all about, oh, just play church. Just go through the motions. Just, you know, just act like you're doing things the way they do it in the mainstream. But as soon as you walk out the door, you go right back to being a heathen of a queer who's running around, sleeping with everything, drinking yourself drunk, pumping your veins full of drugs, doing all things you know you ought not to be doing. Well, I'm sorry. That's not the message we preach. That's right. That's not what we believe. We believe in living a life that's an example. We believe in living a life that's a testimony and a witness to an unsafe world. And that means we've got to live Lisa separate from the world. Right. LGBT or otherwise. That's right. So we appeal to a very different dynamic, a, di a very different demographic than a lot of churches appeal to. So that's why the work that we do is that much harder than other churches. And you know, so you can't compare this ministry that we have to other affirming ministries in Dallas right. because it's apples to oranges. That's right. It's apples to oranges. A lot of affirming ministries have gone down the road of universalism and they basically say it don't matter what you believe, it don't matter if you believe. You can be a you know, you can be uh, somebody who don't even believe in God and you want to come to our church, that's all well and good. And you can be a, uh, somebody that worships trees and if you want to come to our church, that's all good. You know, and, and literally, folks, um, you know, it sounds goofy, but I'm literally telling the truth. Yes, I was disturbed to find out that some years back that MCC actually allows pagan groups as part of their denomination. 
And it doesn't have anything to do with Christianity. And you cannot mingle Christianity with anything else because Christianity doesn't mingle. No. You can't mix it with something because it don't mix. But you see, this is the kind of thing we got going on in our world it today. Is. And the work that we're doing is an extremely difficult work because we do appeal to a very specific group of people. I'm just grateful today for those of you in this audience today because you are those people. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad to know I'm not alone. Amen. I may not have a lot of company, but I'm not by myself. <laughs> and it's a whole lot better not being by yourself. Amen. But in this church, we got some folks that love the Lord. Yeah. We got some folks that take the Word of God seriously. We got some folks that want to worship God and want to live for God and want to be a testimony to an unsaved world. Amen. And if you want to be a part of a church like that, then honey, look at our website, find out where we meet and come be with us. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to move forward with the service at this time. And uh, we've still got some folks. I've been doing a lot of yakking trying to buy them time. Amen. Somebody online said, boy, he talked so much at the start of the service, he about made me suicidal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't tell you this, but I was trying to buy some time. Sometimes, you know, I'll do that. I'll, I'll discreetly, you know, kind of babble so I, can, so I can buy folks time to get here. But uh, we've got some folks that hopefully will yet come in, but they're coming an awful long distance. Miguel and his wife and little girl, boy, that little girl was so good yesterday. She uh, You'd have been shocked. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Cindy has a beautiful house, big, great, big room, uh, living room, you know, and we had a, a, I mean, she got plenty of room there for a, a, a number of people. And, uh, but that little girl sat through that meeting and paid attention. I was shocked at how good she was. What a blessing. But she's such a sweet kid, you know, got a lot of energy, but what kid four years old doesn't? Right. You know, what kid four year old doesn't have energy? And uh, but boy, she was so well behaved yesterday. It really would have made you proud. And we are so grateful for Miguel and his yes. wife and his daughter yes. coming and being a part of our church. They love us. They love our ministry. They love our church. They know that we know how to touch God. Amen. Because I'm telling you, Miguel went and after that baby got healed, he said, that's it, i got to tell my folk, they, if they need healing, I know where to go. And he brought his family, and they turned around and report that all the news is good news. Amen. So the Lord is touching people and helping people and healing people, and I'm grateful for that today. But we want to open up the floor, and I'm going to ask you today, those of you that would be willing to share, please do, don't hold back. Of course, now if you're going to get up here and tell everybody what a Mimi the pastor is, maybe you want to hold back a little. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to open the floor, and we want, we want you to come and share your heart and just tell folks, you know, bear in mind there are going to be people watching on the internet. Let them know what you think of this little church. Let them know what you think of the ministry. And, uh, you know, give them something to nibble on that might encourage them to want to come and check us out and be part of what God is doing here. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right, what will be? I thought you Oh, you want to start? All right, oh, oh, excuse me. Well, put me in my place. I asked if he's going to start. He said, I'm going to. So, well, oh, oh, I, think the, I think a little preacher's wife was coming out there, don't you? Amen. All right, so I'm going to call on Tommy at this time and uh, let him come and start. Amen. Some of that was for my own benefit. <laughs> I, uh, I definitely was was not uh, suicidal, so you know that was not the problem. However, your discreet speaking sure trampled over a lot of things that I had in mind to say. So I re reorganized it a little bit. But I figured I would go first, and that way I can give my piece out. <laughs> in, one, in one piece, right? But uh, really, uh, I, I uh, 
I, I would start out by apologizing just for this one fact, and that is, you know, I have not had the experience that maybe a lot of people have had in in the mainstream church world, and uh, haven't been been raised or groomed per se to learn how to appropriately demonstrate appreciation <laughs> for my pastor who is continuing to distract me. <laughs> um, certainly uh, my background was one that I, I've you know testified in previous uh, occasions that was very very different from the mainstream. And for that, I'm sorry because I realize how easy it is for anyone that we value to be taken for granted. We do it with our families. We do it with any number of relationships we have. But you know, certainly our relationship with our pastor and, and our, our spiritual uh, provider certainly is one that we need to take stock in and make sure that we take every opportunity to make sure that we're holding his, his arms up because he's got a, a battle not only for himself but for all of us for our benefit mm -hmm. and you know as I said I, I'm not going to testify about my my long long life <laughs> up to this point it seems like I've had a very long one at least um, but I can think back you know, and I often do think back to, you know, the first services in 2002 and where I was at that time and where I'd come from at that point. And I can go into, you know, talk about how, uh, how devastated I had been in, in prior, my prior experience um, for what faith I, I did have that wound up being just manipulated and pulverized to, to the point where, um, you know, you even questioned the motivation behind having faith. Is it worth having faith? Is faith right. real? Faith in what? Um, then trans transitioning from that to just the complete railing against God and, and anything to do with God. And where you have to be, you know, if you haven't been there yourself, you have to be in, in some really dark places yep. um, to have that kind of mental thought process and that kind of um, that kind of bitterness inside you it's a it's a really strange situation but I, I met pastor and he you know made it clear that he intended to start the, the Grace Oasis Ministries in 2002 and I came along initially to support him because somewhere in me I knew that anything that was in support of whether it be just what an individual believed and in, if that's all that it was, but anything that would benefit people, that could empower people, that could uplift people, that could strengthen people, that could help them, couldn't be bad. Now, the fact that God was attached to it, eh, I just had to kind of deal with that initially, right? Mm -hmm. But I came, came to listen and learn and understand and, and thank God he knew what he was doing. It was an, it, an opening, the way he um, orchestrated everything. It was the way to get through to me and get through to my heart and get me to reconsider, you know, having a relationship with him and what it really meant to have a relationship with him and to have faith in him. And from that point on, progressively to this day, I've gotten to enjoy such a marvelous relationship with the Lord that I know is still yet to be revealed to me yes. uh, as life goes on and I learn more and I understand more and, and you know I'm still kind of thick skull so the yes. Lord has to work on me in some respects but none of that would have been possible had this pastor not had the, the dedication, the integrity to respond to the will of God and to his calling despite so much opposition that, that he's faced every step of the way um I can talk about how wonderful my life is now that I have um, such a full life and a
I have a full life, a happy life, one that I that surpasses <clears throat> what I what I had before. You know, I no longer wake up every day wondering, you know, what is the point of our being put here on this earth? Why would we have a God <clears throat> that would create beings to have such struggles both in this life and possibly in the next. Um, I can look forward every day realizing I have the confidence that God is with me, yes. that he's got his hand on me, yes. and I'm not some minuscule toy that he just sort of chooses to mess with or not mess with or uh, what have you, but he's really engaged in our lives. Yes. And we can call on him just like we can call on our partners, like we can call on our parents, like we can call on our, our, on our closest relationships. And he's there and actually much more reliable Amen. come to find out Amen. than any, any other human companion can, yes. can be. Um, I look at trials, not that I don't still have trials, I have them every day, but I can look at them and put them in God's hands, literally, where yes. I wouldn't before, where I wouldn't have even, you know, understood how to do that. Uh, I pray daily, you know, I call on the Lord every day in yes. any number of situations. And, and then I've gotten the wonderful opportunity through this ministry to see you know, not only has my life been better, but I've watched people walk through the door over all these years, whether they're still here with us or not, and seeing them be blessed immensely with, with you know, uh, relationships, with jobs, with health. We've even recently, as we talked about earlier today, been able to witness marvelous miracles yes. for people. Yes. And that all has just re re emphasized to me in my in my spirit god is real and god is here he's yes, great yes, and he's here for us yes. and he's done so much for us and yes. part of doing what he does for us is making sure that we have men like our pastor who are able to listen for the lord seek his anointing and give us the word that we need at the right time um, and to try to have and have a burden for souls and to try so hard to out reach out to people who are unsaved people who have been lost, people who have been uh, pushed aside by the current church world yes. because of who they are yes. or, or where they've come from in life. And, and, you know, thank you for that. That sounds so empty, but thank you for that. Because I know there's <clears throat> got to be a lot more me's out there. There are. And if we can just hang in there, and if you can hang in there and do what you do, you know, it'll be marvelous if we can just reach those people because it's worth, it's worth that. Amen. But one thing also I'd like to make sure, this didn't go the way I planned, but one more that I definitely want to say is, and it, it holds true for me too, is again, like I said from the beginning, we tend to take people closest to us often for granted. So collectively as a congregation, I think we should take stock and just think about what more can we do just to make sure that our pastor knows that we're behind him, regardless of the, the obstacles he faces, both personally, he's human like the rest of us, he has his personal demons he fights, but on top of that, out there fighting for our, our salvation and our relationships with God, our reconciliation of who we are to our faith, and for those out there who have yet to walk through the door, say we've got to reach. So, and also I wanted to bring out, you know, I get to see the behind the scenes that a lot of you don't get to see because I live with them. <laughs> <laughs> Which is mostly good, but I tell you what. <laughs> One thing I will say, uh, we've been blessed, you know, on some occasions to be able to go on, you know, cruises. And you've heard of, heard us talk at different times about how we love them and stuff. And, you know, one of the things that, that I like about it, them is that it gives us a brief moment to kind of 
unplugged for a little while, yeah. which every human needs, no matter what they're tasked to do, because we are <laughs> flesh and bone, we, we need that recharge sometimes. And um, one of the reasons I like it is not only for myself, but it's one of the very, very rare opportunities where he's listening to me, yeah. and we're actually uh, probably the most connected as far as being spouses, partners, as we ever are, because he works all the time in the ministry. Mm -hmm. There's rarely, 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 I'm not even, I can't even exaggerate it. He is constantly, I wake up, he's got his laptop <laughs> on his lap next to me, working on a new outreach campaign, or he's responding to people who have sent in inquiries to the church or who are seeking help in one respect or another. Um, he stays up all hours, wears himself out, sometimes doesn't take care of him, so it's himself, so I have to kind of nag at him. Mm -hmm. But uh, that doesn't work, so... <laughs> <laughs> So honestly, the cruises, which by no means get don't uh, misunderstand, we travel. Anything we do is extremely, extremely cheap because you know we are blessed to at least be able to to have a, a comfortable life. But we're not by any means rich, and we juggle bills and what have you like any other normal family. But it, it, I look forward to those times a lot of times because it's the it's the one time where he's not, he can't, and it, it, that's pretty much what it takes to shut him down so to speak. He won't turn off. He's always on a mission to find another way to reach the unsaved, find another way to save souls or to, you know, make a way so that these people eventually, you know, will find the right paths. And uh, that is not something many people get to see and it's been certainly a continued education for me personally. But that's because you guys don't see that, it's certainly easy again not to realize what degree of work and effort and commitment goes into it so i share that with you just as further thought you know yourselves in terms of you know when you see him kind of a little stressed sometimes or a little tired or sometimes please you know a kind word um a gesture you know think about it uh, it goes a long way to help him to hold him up and keep him going for us for us all so Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, I've thought about it so many times. I was 12 years old, and I had such a burden for souls. I wanted so badly. I wanted so badly for people to know Jesus. Because you have no idea, even as a kid, I told you, growing up in the environment I grew up in, I needed him. And he meant so much to me. My relationship with the Lord since I was a kid has just been such a lifesaver, you know. And I can't even begin to tell you, you know, our home was full, full of turmoil. Oh my God, my, the home I grew up in, some of you understand, you, you've had similar. <laughs> But our home, my home was so full of turmoil and just constant bickering and fighting and negativity and, you know, and then my father had more demons than most people have clothes, you know, and uh, I'd go to church and it was like walking into heaven. It was literally like walking into heaven, the peace and the joy and the family that I had in church. You know, my, my own family was so torn up by all this turmoil, you know. But when I went to church, I had all this other family. And we weren't fighting and we weren't arguing and there wasn't all this thing. You know, we were encouraging one another. We were praying for one another. We were loving one another. And I wanted people to know Jesus. And even at 12, the Lord, I don't know whether God put the idea in my spirit or whether I just thunk of it or what, but I started a... A ministry as a clown. I was a kid, and I knew I was a kid. I I knew, you know, Lisa, that I couldn't go out and preach at 12 years old, but I could do things for other kids. You know, I could do things, and I started a clown ministry, and I wound up working as a Christian clown, 
had a ministry as a Christian clown for four years. And, uh, and as a clown, I literally watched. I know some people in the Pentecostal movement, their teeth are going to fall out of their head when I say this. I watched young people receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, and I was in full makeup. Mm -hmm. yep. And yet, in our meetings, we had kids receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, God, I'm going to tell you, God don't get hung up on the stuff we get hung up on. <laughs> See, God is able to work through and work past things that we get all hung up on, I'm going to tell you. But anyway, I appreciate, uh, sometimes, you know, I feel like I have probably been about the worst testimony to Tommy of any Christian. Because like he said, he gets to see the good and the bad. As the old saying goes, the good, bad, and the ugly. And uh, he, he sees me wrestle with my devil sometimes. And uh, my insecurities and my... Mm -hmm. uh, there's too big a list to go down. <clears throat> but I sometimes thought, and I believe me, there, there are times that I've kept this ministry going when I thought we were going to have to shut it down. And I kept it going, I kid you not, specifically for him. Because I knew that if we shut this down, Tommy will not have a church. Because there's nowhere he and I could go and be welcome and be affirmed and be, you know, and, and hear the Jesus name message. And I knew that. And so I said, well, if, if it's just for Tommy that I'm doing this, then it's just for Tommy that I'm doing this. Because if one soul gets rescued from that Jehovah's Witness cult, if I can make heaven and God can give me credit for one soul, then I'll take it. I'd like to have a crown full of stars, but I'll take I'll take a I'll take a crown with one star if I have to. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who else would like to share today? I'm gonna let you pick if you'd like to share. Jack, do you want to come? Certainly. I am, I always say it, um, this church was definitely a godsend for me, because for eight years, I, 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 I talk about it all the time, for eight years, the Lord wouldn't let me settle in the church. He told me, I want you in Dallas, wouldn't give me a specific reason as to why, but he said, I want you in Dallas, and for eight years, I said, well, can I... How about this church? And no, this church, no. He actually let me go to one church for a couple of months, and then finally he said, this is just a risk respite, but it, it, this is short term. But because little did I know that he was preparing me for this church's entrance into my life. Come, the background I had and he's, that he is familiar with um, in the United Pentecostal Church is such a far cry, even though we have the same core doctrine and that's what's important. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, you can believe that the importance is in legalisms and do's and don'ts if you want to. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, yes. it's the knowledge of who Jesus is. Right, right. And what he started. That's right. And how he wanted it done that's important. That's right. Not how, not the, you know, the specifics of, you know, like say the list of do's and don'ts. Right. His grace is bigger than that. Amen. It took God to eight years to put me in a frame of mind that I could accept that message. Because for decades, I believed in the, as Brother Charles is so famous for putting it, the high hair holiness yeah. standards. I'm thankful for those years because without that foundation, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, I wouldn't know the Lord as I know Him now. Yes. But also, I wouldn't have really recognized the full meaning of grace. Because, you know, even though I believed grace, you know, you know that grace was what it was all about. That, that it was, for me then, beforehand, before this church came along, and the Lord had already started working for that time. He had to take me out of church to get me ready for church. Mm -hmm. And I know Brother Charles knows what I'm talking about. That's why he preaches the message he does. Because 
when you believe, when you go through decades of your life genuinely, genuinely loving the Lord and genuinely, genuinely believing that grace is a contingent thing. Yes. That that, that kind of conditioning completely affects how you think about every aspect of your life. Yes. And like I said, it, the Lord, the Lord literally had to take me out of church so that I could become part of what I consider the best church I've ever been in in my life. Amen. It were a small group. I've, I've watched people come and go. As I told um, a lady in um, nursing home today, um, I said, um, just in the time that I've been part of the church, this church here. Um, I told her, she said, well, how come y'all's church is so small? And I, I told her, I said, well, but it, because it's the message we preach. And it's because the enemy does work, and he works on the people that are trying to come in. And before they can even really understand what, what they're trying to become a part of, he's found some way to divert them off and sh shave them out of the, you know, out of the opportunity to grow in him. Yes. And I, told, and, um, I said... Um, if everybody had just stuck it out a little while and got past the excuses the enemy gave them, our church would probably be running two or three hundred people. Yeah. yeah. And I've, 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 I've just what I've seen, it, it, it is, I know what Brother Charles deals with a lot because I've, from a pew perspective, known the hurts and stuff of watch, watching people come and go. It is a hurtful thing. But God is gracious, and just because one little chapter that they're a part of has been closed doesn't mean they're out of it for the, That's who knows? That's right. That's they can right. come back tomorrow, and it'd be a wonderful thing, because we still love them. Yes. yes. And I'm, but I'm mostly thankful for this church, because without, without this church, as I tell the nursing home, live it when you when you have your relationship with the Lord. It's a one on one thing. That is the most priceless, precious thing a person can have. But there's something about being, you know, having that relationship and being in fellowship with people that have the same kind of a relationship. Yeah. That's just as real to them as yours is to you. And. When, when you get together and then you get in one mind and one accord and then God starts doing things not just inside of you but He's actually doing things in amongst you too. Right. That builds the faith up of everybody present. Yes. yes. And the more God's able to do, yes. the, big, the bigger and better your faith gets to grow. Right. Yes. And I am thankful because without the message, there is no purpose for our being here. Yeah. You know, without knowing... You know, so many churches out there have no idea where they missed the mark. Yeah. They have no idea why they're constantly having to encourage their people, let's pray for revival, let's pray for revival, whatever revival they're looking for. <laughs> um, you know, revival is a 24-7 is a thing that you do with your walk with God when you're, when you're with Him by yourself. Right. That's where revival starts. That's right. That's right. You know, um, and I've, I've heard that so, so much for so many years of my life. But I'm thankful that I know the Lord. I can say I know the Lord better today than I knew Him. And I, and I love Him, and trust me, I've seen the, the Lord work miracles, like, you know, just because my faith was there. Yeah. But just because the Lord's working miracles doesn't mean you've got every, all your ducks in a row in what you sh what you should be believing. Right, right. And I'm so thankful that the Lord works on all of it. He takes you where you are, yeah. works on you where you are, yeah. and then one step at a time brings you from where you are to where He wants you to be. That's right. And He's still doing that for all of us. I'm thankful He's still doing it for me yeah. because one day He allowed me to hear about our church. And I would, have, and like I say, when, when the Lord brought this church to Dallas proper, I was ready. And 
and it was it's been such a blessing for me since and I to this day am so very thankful for the message I get to hear every message I get to hear and I'm so very thankful that I get to be a part of it I, I may not it may seem that I don't get to contribute much in the way of you know time and efforts and things but that doesn't mean I value it any less because I do love this church, I love the people of this church, and I love my pastor. I do appreciate him. I don't get to show it as much as I'd love to, but I do appreciate him. But I appreciate most of all the Lord. Yes. Because he could have left me. He could have left me in the mess that I was in. He could have let me go through some, like so many people I know. He could have let me go through my entire life, not getting to have the not all of the knowledge that I've been able to have up to now and I know there's still more there's still more yes. to learn yes. there's still more to find out and there's still more to get to watch God do Amen. but I'm thankful for this church I'm thankful for, for every one of you and I'm thankful for even all of those people that have come and gone because like I say in my heart I, I'm, I'm still praying Lord bring them back yeah. but I, I'm so thankful for my pastor I'm so thankful for my church Amen. and I love the Lord Amen. Amen. thank you brother God bless you I've got the mic turned up a little bit, so the reason I've done that is uh, the mic we're using for the for the uh, broadcast, you know, it actually, the new one has a wonderful sound quality, but it is not the most sensitive, so I kind of have to have the volume up a little bit so that it can catch your voices, amen. Anybody else want to share today? I hope somebody does. Miss Tammy, yeah. can I trust you? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we love Tim. Yes, we do. Here you go. Yeah, I was about to say, when I first met Tommy and Charlie two years ago, when I first walked in the door, I felt so much love. This is a great church. And I appreciate the pastor, Tommy. Yes, amen. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. We love you. Amen. Would anybody else like to share? Hopefully, if y'all keep going up, oh, Miss Lisa, uh -huh. the newest member of the flock. <laughs> She's our little you. <laughs> Here you go, Lisa. Whoops. You don't have to go too close to your mouth because it's awful sensitive. God and I have had a marvelous bunch of years because I'm old <laughs> and I never had a problem with God mm -hmm. however there were churches yes. <laughs> and there were churches <laughs> and there were churches and God would bring, bring me to one for a while and then things would go strange and I'd leave and I know that it was God taking me from one to another, to another, to another. And there were times when I wasn't going to church. Yes. There were times that I, I was done with church. Yeah. Me and God are fine, but church is, no. Uh, I don't know, probably been members of about seven or eight denominations. Mm. Uh, and I know God took me in them to for purposes, for yeah, purposes, for a time, for a lot. For some of them were for a short period of time, and some of them were for a long period of time. Right. I did manage to come in contact with some Pentecostals, and found out some of the gifts of the Spirit that I've got, but. They didn't fit in with the other churches I ended up being in. Yeah. And I don't know how long I'm here for. Doesn't matter. Right. It's right. God's choice. Yes. Right. God is the one who's in charge of my life, always happy. Right. Uh, right. Since I first got the call into ministry when I was six. And I said, but God, I'm a member of a Methodist church and ladies can't. Can, they can sing, they can play the piano and teach, and teach Sunday school. So yeah, it's not gonna work. Um, 
I've been in ministry off and on for many years. Uh, I was in MCC. Uh, I was in MCC in Fort Worth. Uh, brought a church from seven people to 40 or 50 before I left. Uh, with a bar ministry. <laughs> yeah. But then it was time for me to be someplace else. And I was able to find out some of the things about the Pentecostal churches that I really, really, really appreciate. Yes. And some that I really, really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't quite sure where I'm still right now, not quite sure where I'm going. But I'm still going. Yeah. And God's still there and God's still working on me. And I have known Martin for many years. <laughs> Since I came to Texas almost. And when I found out that he was going to church on a regular basis, I scratched my head because the only time we'd been in churches was for weddings or for funerals. And there were a lot of funerals because it was during the AIDS crisis. Yes. Uh, I did probably 150 in a year that I did that I preached. Mm. Uh, and then I got out of MCC and there were still people dying and I kept getting calls and I kept doing services. Yeah. Then God gave me a respite for a while and I was a purchasing manager for 20 years. <laughs> me and Martin, <laughs> he was, he was my, my sales person in, to go to in many areas. But when I found out he was going to church on a regular basis, I was scratching my head on this one. And so finally one day, I said, can I go to church with you and be okay? Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing. <laughs> Not knowing. Gee, thanks, man. <laughs> You're really out there selling it, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> But one of the things I would like to say is I have seen such a change because of this church. Because he finally found some place that would talk to him, talk to his spirit about things that were, were not settled. Yes. And he has found that. I, I've seen that. I've seen that change. And for people who were in churches that didn't teach what God was about, mm -hmm. this is a place to come. Yes. This yes. is a place to come because they, you get the teaching, they get the information. I got it by reading the Bible myself. I used to get in trouble in Sunday school when I was a kid because they'd be teaching about how wonderful uh, how, how wonderful a character in the Bible was. And then I'd say, oh, but wait a minute, wait a minute. He also did some really bad things. Yeah. We're not talking about that right now. Uh -huh. So, but you, you don't pull punches. You don't pull punches, and that's good. Amen. You, you, you tell it like it is, like it was, and that means that I can be here and I can hear a full story. Right. Not a piece of something that you, that you pick out yes. of a life. Right, right. And that is so good, and I appreciate being welcomed here, yeah. feeling like I'm welcomed here, and that's so good. I'm going to tell you something though. I was going to sing. You can sing if you want. But the song that is my life, uh -huh. we already did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. I am the woman at the well. Yes. yes. With mm -hmm, our husbands. 
yeah. and the relationships yeah. and the <laughs> messes. But uh, I am just so glad that I've been able to come and uh, you know, see my face more and more. And I, because there are some things that has tra have transpired at the church that I'm a member of that are very unsettling right now. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't, God, I, it, I don't need to know what I'm going to do. God knows what I'm going to do, and he's going to tell me when it's time. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's right. I listen. I, I, was, I was raised to believe in God. Amen, uh, yes. And God and I have had a good relationship. Yes, yes. And that's the one thing that that, that has has helped me through the rough times. And I've been married three times, divorced once, buried two husbands, mm -hmm. been in a couple, three more other relationships. It hasn't been an easy life, but God's always been there. Yes. And I appreciate that, and I'm so glad that I was able to find this word here. Amen. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Yes. Amen. Whoops. Let me step over it before I <laughs> And actually, I was going to tell you, I wasn't sure. Do you sing with soundtracks or or acapella? I sing with acapella. Why can't I sing acapella? Well, because uh, I'm going to have you sing. Maybe we'll try for next Sunday. Why don't you plan something for next Sunday, okay? I was gonna, I actually thought about asking you today, but I said, well, I don't know if she normally sings with soundtracks or what. But, so try to have something. I, I sing acapulco. Oh, you can sing acapulco. We like Mexican music. <laughs> Amen. Does anybody else want to share today? Uh, Johnny's up and running. That's a good sign. <laughs> that probably means he'll say something he's nice. Well, I don't know how far I'm going to get through this without breaking down. <laughs> but right now, this church, in short, has brought me so close to the Lord. It's brought my inner spirit out so much. And it's because of the pastor and Martin. I have to say, Martin, Martin's what it got me coming in. Yes. You know, Martin was the one, yeah, he's not here, Dirty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Martin was the one that, that said, hey, you know, because Bill and I had talked about getting getting married. And uh, we said, we didn't know what to do, where to go. And he said, well, let me talk to my pastor. And I said, great, talk to your pastor. Let, you know, get us a direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, Immediately, he, said, he came and he says, yeah, he said, he, he would he feel honored to do so. And I said, that's my answer. Mm -hmm. You know, the, and we've been praying about it. I've been praying very hard about where to go, about it, who, who to get to. And luckily, he led us here to this church. And I have, and we, excuse me, I keep saying I, and it's <laughs> we. You know, we have, we, we look forward to coming to this church to listen to our pastor. To, to, to get the word of God because it fulfills our every need. Amen. And without Amen. that, we are nothing. Amen. We're so thankful for our pastor. We're so thankful for the church and all the members because Tommy, everybody is just everything in our life. You know, the church itself. And there's been twice or two or three times that I haven't been able to make it to the church. And if people don't think I go online and I don't listen to these church services, you're crazy. I love this church. I have to listen to every moment I possibly can. When I'm not here, I'm here because it's in my heart. Yes. Everything about this. Thank you for having been here. Thank you for giving us that love that you do give us. Without that, we are nothing ourselves. And thank you to God because He's everything that we are. In. We are. Amen. We praise Him. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Now, anybody else? That's up to you. I'm not. I'm not going to point at anybody. I'll just look. Wait a minute. I'm. I'm not the speaker in this family. I'm real bad. But I do want to make sure I do say how much I appreciate Pastor Charles, Tommy. 
church, our family here. Yes. I do very much appreciate it. And I won't last if I start. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, it, it means a lot to me, and it's helped me a whole lot. And I just, I just, I don't know. I just feel wanted here. It's just, it's just great. And I know it was God's plan, plan to lead us here. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank him for that hey. very much. Hey. Thank you. Oh. Amen. Well, Miguel hadn't made it. That's unusual. Normally he'd have been here long before now. But well, we're down to just one person. <laughs> <laughs> one person who qualifies to speak that is. Mr. Let me tell you, I'm really qualified to speak. I got to tell you that you talk about how God works in strange ways. This character called me wanting to sell pre-planned funerals. <laughs> Remember what you said? I'm busy. I can't talk to you right now. <laughs> And he come down to the coffee shop, and we were talking about pre-planned funerals, and then I got to preaching, you know me. And uh, but we really connected, you know. And, and I feel like God really opened a door of communication between him and, and he spent a blessing. And this is one little sheep that's multiplied since he's come in. You know, I remember preacher saying years ago, "It's shepherds don't multiply, sheep do." Amen. The church don't grow because the preacher's bringing them in. No, the church grows because the sheep are bringing them in. Yeah. And this little fella has done a marvelous work. In the little bit of time he's been here, uh, we've had some wonderful people come in in response to his testimony, like Miss Sue and uh, and Elisa, Sue, Lisa, Sue. <laughs> Lisa and Bill and Johnny. And uh, so, you know, we've really been blessed by him, but I want you to share now if you would. Thank you. Um, my work isn't done. I hope to have many more butts in the seat, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, that day that I walked down to the outreach center and the Bible study there, um, turned my life around. I, um, I was brought up in church. I was made to go to church every Sunday, whether I liked it or not. Um, and then I had a parting of the ways because I was asked not to come back. Um, and at that point, that was kind of the end of my journey for a long while. Um, and I tried to go, Lisa drug me to several places, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and I said, okay. Um, but it didn't, it didn't strike me until I met you. Um, that coffee shop conversation, was really the start of my life, my spiritual life, again. Um, we have a history now, 18 months, yeah. and I have enjoyed every minute of it, and I shame myself for when I miss, because I don't want to miss. Yeah. I should not miss, I should be here all the time, and I know that. I have a long journey to catch up all those years that I missed. So. Um, the one thing I want to say is thank you very much. Really thank you very much for getting me back on path. I want to thank my church family here who has also helped me keep on that path. I, I, I can't thank you all enough. Jack and everyone else. And Brother Charles, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Amen. Okay. 